Tonight, a potential presidential candidate caught up in scandal. Emails show massive New Jersey traffic jams were engineered by aides to Governor Chris Christie as political payback. Elaine Quijano has this developing story. This is the CBS Evening News with Scott Pelley. Good evening. Governor Chris Christie ran into a traffic jam today on the road to the White House. Evidence revealed today shows that a top aide to Christie and appointees of the New Jersey governor created a four-day tie-up for thousands of drivers on roads leading to the busiest bridge in the world. The motive was political revenge. Christie, who's believed to be considering a run for the Republican presidential nomination, says he is outraged by today's developments and insists that he was misled by his staff. Elaine Quijano is in Fort Lee for us tonight. Elaine? Well, Scott, it was a local traffic jam on the approach to the busy George Washington Bridge behind me, linking New York and New Jersey. In September, unannounced lane closures backed up traffic into the New Jersey town of Fort Lee. The closures sparked accusations of political retribution against Fort Lee's Democratic mayor, Mark Sokolich, who did not endorse Republican Governor Chris Christie during his successful re-election bid. Christie denied the allegation. But now, emails and text messages reveal a top Christie aide appears to be responsible for the closures. Last August, his deputy chief of staff, Bridget Ann Kelly, wrote, time for some traffic problems in Fort Lee. That email was sent to David Wildstein, a Christie ally, who at the time was a top official at the agency in charge of the bridge, the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey. His response to the directive? Got it, he wrote. When the closures happened, Fort Lee's mayor texted another Port Authority official, Christie appointee Bill Baroni, saying, Presently, we have four very busy traffic lanes merging into only one toll booth. The bigger problem is getting kids to school. Help, please. It's maddening, said the mayor. Another text message appears to revel in the result. Is it wrong that I am smiling, was the reply. It's unclear who sent the message and who received it. The exchange continues. I feel badly about the kids, the unknown person writes. The unattributed response, they are the children of Bono voters. That's a reference to Barbara Bono, the Democrat who lost to Christie in November. New York officials came to the rescue, ordering the lane reopened. The disclosures come just weeks after Governor Christie said his senior staff denied any involvement. I've made it very clear to everybody on my senior staff that if anyone had any knowledge about this, that they needed to come forward to me and tell me about it, and they've all assured me that they don't. Fort Lee Mayor Mark Sokolich, what do you think these closures were about? I was punished because I didn't, um, I guess I didn't support the governor in his re-election bid. Sokolich says the closures caused days of gridlock in his city, delaying emergency vehicles and putting residents at risk. It's completely inexcusable to me, and I just think that it's a culture that's been established that um, I just don't think people think they'll ever get caught and they could do what they want to do and it just it's not the way it works. Late this afternoon Governor Christie released a written statement saying I am outraged and deeply saddened to learn that not only was I misled by a member of my staff but this completely inappropriate and unsanctioned conduct was made without my knowledge. Scott, the governor went on to say the people in his administration will be held responsible. Elaine Quijano at the George Washington Bridge. Elaine, thanks very much. Chris Christie, of course, is a leading star in the Republican Party. The former federal prosecutor was elected governor of New Jersey in 2009. He was re-elected last year by a wide margin. Christie declined to run for president in 2012. Instead, he endorsed Mitt Romney and delivered the keynote address at the Republican convention. Christie drew some GOP criticism for praising President Obama's response to Super Storm Sandy just days before the presidential election. John Dickerson in Washington is our CBS News political director. And John, what does this mean to Christie's presidential hopes? Well, this is a bruise that's not going to go away easily. Political scandals last when they reinforce existing doubts about a politician. Christie's made a name for himself as a blunt and tough executive, but his opponents say he's a bully. 
this abuse of power in his administration gives support to that charge. The danger for a politician is if every time you show your strong side, voters are reminded of a darker other side. Christie also sells himself as a strong executive, but this raises questions about how he runs things. How did this happen on his watch? How did he not know about it? Did he create a culture where this behavior was possible? And finally, what's he going to do about it now? How the governor answers those questions in the next day or so will determine how often they dog him if he decides to run for president. John Dickerson in our Washington newsroom. John. Okay. Make sure the kids are going to bed, all right? Because we're going to talk Jersey politics, Chris Christie style, and you know, the language can get kind of colorful. David Wildstein deserves an ass kicking, okay? It's politics, Jersey style. Some newly released emails. New material suggests state officials actually shut down traffic. So Christie's office was closely involved with the closures. Deliberately creating a huge traffic jam. This is now in his office. Newly obtained emails sent from Governor Christie's deputy chief of staff. Christie's deputy chief of staff, Bridget Ann Kelly. It reads, time for some traffic problems in Fort Lee. Wilstein replied a minute later, got it. To punish a political opponent of the governor. It's a criminal investigation. For at least four days of gridlock, we had families that were looking for emergency services to respond to calls. A bridge too far. And thousands of kids that were late for the first day of school. Governor Christie has stated repeatedly that his staff had nothing to do with those lane closings. This governor has a lot of explaining to do. Governor Christie put out this statement, misled by a member of my staff, made without my knowledge. That becomes an indictment of his leadership in a different way. Can we expect a pylon to start here pretty soon. He has national ambitions. Well, if we don't run Chris Christie, Romney will be the nominee and we'll lose. 2016 is still two years away. I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed for the entire state of New Jersey. Either way, it doesn't bode well for his government. So Christie's off my list. The Bergen Record released newly obtained emails and texts today involving Chris Christie's deputy chief of staff and two of his now former top executives at the Port Authority, all pointing to possible political retribution. Three weeks before the lane closures on the George Washington Bridge, Bridget Ann Kelly, one of three deputies on Christie's senior staff, wrote to Port Authority official David Wildstein, time for some traffic problems in Fort Lee. Wildstein wrote back, got it. Wildstein did order lane closures, which caused major problems for Fort Lee residents. And as the Bergen record reports tonight, emergency responders were delayed in attending to four medical situations, including one in which a 91-year-old woman lay unconscious. That woman later died. The first morning of the lane closures, Fort Lee Mayor Mark Sokolich made numerous calls to Port Authority officials inquiring about what was going on. Bridget Ann Kelly emailed Port Authority Executive Dave Wildstein again. Did he call him back? Wildstein replied, radio silence. His name comes right after Mayor Fulop, an apparent reference to Jersey City Mayor Stephen Fulop, who also claims Christie administration retaliated against him because he also did not endorse gov the governor for re-election. Fort Lee Mayor Sokolich reacted to today's news this way. Don't do me any favors. Don't reach out for me. You need to reach out to the families who were waiting for ambulances taking three times longer to get there. You need to reach out to the thousands of families that couldn't get their kids to school. And you need to reach out to my chief fiscal officer and figure out how much this costs Fort Lee so we could get a reimbursement check from Trenton. That's what I think we need to do. David Wildstein deserves an ass kicking, okay? Sorry, there I said it. Well, I for one have a new favorite mayor. Wildstein, who resigned last month, had been subpoenaed to testify tomorrow before the Assembly Transportation Committee, but he filed a lawsuit in state court today that might stop that from happening. And Chris Christie canceled his only public event today, and the normally talkative Christie and issued only this written statement. What I've seen today for the first time 
is unacceptable and I am outraged and deeply saddened to learn that not only was I misled by a member of my staff, but this completely inappropriate and unsanctioned conduct was made without my knowledge. One thing is clear, this type of behavior is unacceptable and I will not tolerate it because the people of New Jersey deserve better. This behavior is not representative of me or my administration in any way, and people will be held responsible for their actions. Joining me now, Richard Wolf, MSNBC.com executive editor. New Jersey Democratic State Senator Barbara Bono, who ran against Christie for governor last year, and Hunter Walker, national affairs reporter for Talking Points Memo and this program's senior George Washington Bridge correspondent. <laughs> uh, Hunter, uh, just to backtrack here on the story, uh, the theory of the case, <laughs> and it's the stupidest case I, I've ever heard, uh, w is that they were going to retaliate against the mayor of Fort Lee, New Jersey, a Democratic mayor, for not endorsing the Republican governor. <laughs> as, as Barbara can say, it can tell us, too many Democrats got in line with this Republican right. Governor's reelection. And the way they were going to retaliate was not punish him, but punish New Jersey drivers in cars using the George Washington Bridge who come from all over New Jersey, including people who come from Pennsylvania, people who, who are driving from all over the. I mean, it's, it's this the, the idea that you could punish an individual politician in New Jersey, local right. politician, by slowing down the George Washington Bridge is insane, but that's what got us here. Right, and you know, there's so many damning revelations from the set of documents this morning um, that it's really hard to settle on just one. But um, one quote that I find really interesting is, you know, this all ended when um, one of Governor Cuomo's appointees on the Port Authority, because this is an interstate agency, became mm -hmm. aware of the situation. And in an email to one of Christie's top aides, um, the guy who ordered these closures, who was Christie's high school classmate, said, New York just gave them their lanes back. We're going to go, quote, appropriately nuts. So I love this idea that in Jersey politics, there's a level of going nuts that's somehow appropriate. So certainly very far from any idea of good government I've heard of. Senator Bono, I want to read you uh, one exchange that they found in, in these texts. Um, it it's, uh, alludes to the uh, problem of the school buses were having trouble getting through the traffic. And uh, one of the, this is a, a text to uh, Wildstein. Uh, is it wrong that I'm smiling, the recipient of the text? message responded to Wildstein. No, Wildstein wrote in response. The person replied to Wildstein, I feel badly about the kids, I guess, meaning the kids on those school buses. To which Wildstein said, they are the children of Buono voters. What's your reaction to that? What kind of a person says that? I have to ask you that, Lawrence. I mean, I'm not surprised. I knew that this was going to lead to Chris Christie back in September because this is an administration. It's a paramilitary organization. People don't go to the bathroom without asking his permission. But I have to tell you, those quotes were, were startling to me. They were horrifying that somebody would talk about children in that way. It's an abuse of trust of, of the public. I've been in public office for 21 years, and I've spent every day trying to win people's trust, and this has just shattered it. It is, it is stunning. It is cruelty to children. It is abuse of children. But like everything else in this story, it's stunningly stupid, the idea that you could punish exclusively the children of Buono voters on that school bus. That there were no Christie arrogance. voter children on that school bus. It's arrogance. But it's, it's wildly stupid. Mm -hmm. Richard Wolf, uh, I spent some time today, we haven't been able to do it, uh, to get the name of the 91-year-old woman mm -hmm. uh, who was delayed medical treatment that day uh, because of this uh, traffic jam. And, uh, and eventually died. And we don't know whether she died because mm -hmm. of the delay in treatment. Uh, right. but, th but in politics, that's not the way they play this okay. game. In politics, she, when we have her name, is going to become the Willie Horton of Chris Christie's presidential campaign. His yeah. opponents are going to pin that name on him. Mm -hmm. This woman is dead because of action taken by the Christie administration. Yeah, it, it's very easy to look at this and say, well, it's stupid. Of course, Watergate, the plumbers at Watergate, that was pretty hard yeah, right too. It had the same thing, but, it? it had stupidity it, all the way through. In any case, it breaks through. This is, people don't understand about the struggle to lift education standards. They don't understand about state budgets and, and how do jobs come and go, but they do understand this kind of story. It breaks through all politics. It breaks through the kind of people who only tune in to this kind of network. And, and, and it reaches into the late night 
comedy shows. It's something that people can understand at a very visceral level, not just because they struggle with the uh, bridges, but because they understand the importance of emergency vehicles getting through. And remember, Chris Christie was sailing, all due respect, but sailing to re-election. He had his endorsements lined up. This was so far beyond the pale, it was not just stupid, it was unnecessary. I, I want to get a translation from our New Jersey experts here of this particular sequence here, where Wildstein uh, was... Uh, uh, exchanging uh, messages with uh, Bill Stepien, uh, Christie's campaign manager, about a Wall Street Journal story about local officials' complaints. Uh, and Stepien reacted to the article saying, it's fine, the mayor is an idiot though, uh, win some, he's trying to say win some, lose some. Wildstein wrote back, this part I don't get, I had empty boxes ready to take to work today just in case. It will be a tough November for this little Serbian. Uh, What's, what's that about the empty boxes thing? Well, you know, that was some of the initial coverage that was going on in this, when you had Mayor Sokolich of Fort Lee quoted, sort of implying that he thought this was punitive in nature. And that was sort of the first, the canary in the mine that let us know this was a problem. And, you know, it shows so that this, Wildstein... Is this, is this Wildstein saying uh, if there was going to be a negative article in the Wall Street Journal, maybe he would have to get fired and, and fill up those empty boxes and get out of his office? Exactly. It, it, yeah. it shows he yeah. had the fairly normal response that his job might be in jeopardy. And if um, Chris Christie and his administration hadn't supported him, as that exchange with the campaign manager shows they did from the get-go, his job might have, and it probably would have anywhere else. Senator Bono, you ran against one of the most talkative governors in the United States of America. I think the most talkative a governor. Lot of hot air. Always available to the press about everything not a audible sound out of the man today he's done as far as we know nothing about this today I don't see what on the basis of these uh, this information prevents him from firing this Kelly publicly and he should, today and he should and before the close something. of business if we were US attorney today he would have conducted an investigation into this already and that's why I've called on the US Department of Justice to do just that because there is sufficient evidence to look into the possibility of criminal acts being committed here I mean I think it goes beyond a bridge closing this is an issue of character this is a governor that has a reputation for utilizing the the, the levers of power to exact political revenge and this is something the people, not just of New Jersey, but the people of the United States of America need to know about. Because he's somebody who wants to uh, lead our nation and be the chief executive and over the largest, the most powerful military force in the world. And he can't be trusted to manage the busiest bridge in the world. Uh, Richard Wolf, I've never seen a smoking gun like it than mm -hmm. this Miss Kelly's thing that begins with, it looks like we need to close the bridge today, mm -hmm. uh, that one. Uh, she works for him directly, completely fireable by him in right. the instant. Uh, why she is still employed tonight is beyond my wildest dreams. Tomorrow, it seems to me, Chris Christie's political career hangs in the balance tomorrow by what action he will take. People can say around the country, it's a traffic jam, it's not a big deal. Well, when they see the 30-second commercials about the 91-year-old woman uh, in the presidential campaign, right. they'll, they'll think it's a big deal. But also, it's all entirely now about what does this decisive man do, this tough-talking, quick-acting, decisive man. He couldn't figure out what to do today, and he had more than 12 hours to figure that out. See, right. Lawrence, I take issue with that. I think it, it depends, really, people need to know what this governor knew and yes. when he knew that, it. That too, that too, but yeah. at a minimum, let's just for the moment believe or accept for the moment this unbelievably thin read of his defense, which he's hearing about this for the first time. Oh, Those on. are the key words in his written <laughs> statement today, the first time, which is very hard to believe. But let's accept it for the moment and say that going forward, the issue is what does he do tomorrow? What does he have to do yeah. tomorrow? And what time does he have to do it? How many hours can he let go by? It's already too late. For the crisis man, Management. Look, you can be shocked that there's gambling in Casablanca, but if your reputation <laughs> is that you are a great manager, if your reputation is that you can reach across the party divide and you're out there punishing Democrats who are not just Democrats, they just refuse to endorse you, then your two pillars of your entire reputation have just crumbled. So reaction to the crisis is one thing, but how do you repay your reputation? That's much harder. Richard Wolf, Senator Barbara Buono, and Hunter Walker, thank you all for joining me tonight. Thank you for having me. Coming up, Steve Schmidt joins me to talk about Chris Christie and why today was not just a bad day for Chris Christie, it was also a bad day 
for Rand Paul. And in the rewrite tonight, what the Washington media is not telling you about the new book about the Obama administration by former Defense Secretary Robert Gates. And later, a shocking conspiracy by scores of New York City police officers to defraud the government of hundreds of millions of dollars through fraudulent disability claims linked to their service on 9-11. They actually got away with using 9-11 for their own personal gain until they got arrested yesterday. You guys are Here's a question for